If you like my videos, please check out my website at creationsciencefiction.com. You'll find articles on creationism there, as well as my blog. I also have a Creation Science Fiction Facebook page now, too. All right, well, today I'm here with Gary Hurd, Dr. Gary Hurd. Um, Gary is... Uh, had a very varied career in academic and commercial science. His first academic fellowships in 1972 and 1973 were in geochemistry, focused on instrumental neutron activation analysis studies of clays and ancient pottery. This interest was maintained lifelong with related publications as recently as 2013. His 1976 doctorate was awarded by the University of California for an ethnographic study of Yucatec Mayan potters and their communities. He was an industrial polymer chem chemist for a time, but ultimately returned to academic life. His first time faculty position was in the Department of Psychiatry at the California College of Medicine, now UC Irvine Medical Center. He then moved to the, the faculty of the Medical College of Georgia in 1979, leaving medicine for good in 1985. Dr. Hurd returned to California and full-time work in archaeology. So quite a varied career, Gary. <laughs> yeah. He was a research leader of major multi-site excavation products for the Irvine Co Company, the county of Orange County, um, and the OC Transportation Agency. He helped negotiate the sometimes conflicting goals of Native American developers, scientific, and government shareholders. Um, returning to a commerce setting, Hurd became the curator and later director of the Orange County Natural History Museum and an adjunct professor at Saddleback Community College. So great bio, <laughs> Gary. That's just awesome. Um, you know, tell us, uh, tell us why you're here today and what you'd like to discuss. Well, I was, I was asked to take a look at a, a video that was of a lecture series sponsored by the uh, Discovery Institute. Now, the Discovery Institute was created back in the 90s. Uh, to promote intelligent design creationism. And I actually got involved with creationism because as the director of the museum and curator of anthropology, I had uh, folks come into the museum quite agitated sometimes um, and would insist that we're all spawn of Satan and we're trying to destroy America by promoting <laughs> lies about fossils. And as an anthropologist and also as a former professor of psychiatry, uh, you, you try and understand where these are coming from so you can relate to them better. Um, and so I started reading a lot about creationism and because I never had really before. So this is 23, 24 years ago. And so that was my introduction to creationism. Um, so recently, the Discovery Institute has been promoting a, a video on YouTube uh, by Professor James Tour. Yeah, I've James seen a Tour. lot of young earth creationists post the same video too. Fascinating because yes, it, it has attracted tremendous attention um, to uh, Tour and the Discovery Institute by uh, creationists, uh, young earth and old earth. Mm -hmm. Tour claims he, he doesn't have a problem with old earth. Um, and he doesn't even have say have a problem with evolution. He has this sense that God created life, and otherwise it's impossible, and that's his his totem. His he grabs at this to to help his faith and preserve his faith. He became a, a born again Jew uh, as a student, and so. Consequently, uh, he got a doctorate in, in organic chemistry, um, uh, synthetic organic chemistry. So here's this guy specialized in making things that never existed before uh, in organics. Um, a very bright man. Unfortunately, as we're going to see, uh, he's a very delusional man. And I mean that professionally. <laughs> he uh, has made some, in his enthusiasm and need, uh, has made some very strange statements, and, and that's what we're going to explore today. All right, well, let's take a look. This is about, about a three or four minute video clip here. Yeah, uh, so we'll, under four, just under four minutes. 
Okay, yeah, we'll take a look at the video clip, and then we'll be right back to uh, make some comments. Great. Well, let me show you the primary literature. 2018 in the journal Nature. This is our top journal. You want to see what Nature will publish in this area? None of us could get away with this, except origin of life researchers do. This guy is Nobel laureate Jack uh, uh, Sostak. Here's what he writes on, on, on uh, how did life begin. Let's go through it. I'm interested in it. How did life begin? I mean, the guy's the Nobel Prize winner. He must know. <laughs> the early atmosphere had no oxygen. It consisted mainly of nitrogen, carbon dioxide, with smaller amounts of hydrogen, water, and methane. Lightning, asteroid impacts, UV light from the sun acted on the atmosphere to generate hydrogen cyanide, a compound of hydrogen, carbon, and nitrogen. Raining into volcanic or, or, or crater lakes, the cyanide reacted with iron, brought up water circulating through rocks. The resulting iron cyanide compounds accumulated over time, building up into a concentration stew of reactive chemicals. Okay, cool. Where are we? Life, as we know it, requires RNA. Some scientists believe that RNA emerged directly from these reactive chemicals, nudged along by dynamic forces in the environment. Huh? <laughs> nudged has no, you can't put nudged in any of our articles. No scientist knows what nudged means. They don't know. Nucleotides, the building blocks of RNA, eventually formed, then joined together to make strands of RNA. Some stages of the process are still not well understood. You think? How do these things hook together? Show me the chemistry. It's not there. Once RNA was made, some strands of it become enclosed within tiny vesicles formed by spontaneous assembly of fatty acid lipids in the membranes, creating the first protocells. As the membranes incorporated more fatty acids, they grew and divided. At the same time, internal chemical reactions drove replication of encapsulated RNA. That is nonsense. Next slide. Here is, next slide, the figure that he showed. This is the figure. From nature, this is his figure. Cyanide derivatives and simple sugars. Those are not sugars. He says this is oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus. That's fictitious. I don't know any sugars that have that chemical composition. You don't know that. He's lying to you. <laughs> That's not real. Is this HCN? I mean, there should be a carbon, a nitrogen, and a hydrogen if that's HCN. And I, you know, I'm colorblind, but I, I can see that's not really HCN. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Maybe that's phosphate. I can see that. That'd be phosphorus, oxygen, oxygen. Maybe that's phosphate. Okay. And then all of a sudden, boom, you got an RNA nucleotide. <laughs> but the problem is that's not a nucleotide. It's the wrong structure. By far, that's the wrong structure. He didn't even put the right structure. At least he could have put the right structure. He didn't even put the right structure. Well, what, what's acting upon this to make it do this? Well, heat from here, UV light from there. Boom. <laughs> Nobody knows. That's in nature. That's not in an eighth grade textbook from 2018. People think I selectively choose these things from crazy places. No, this is nature 2018. This is what confuses even professors see this and they think, oh, yeah, people know. Nobody knows. This is a bunch of garbage. This is garbage. All right, well, Gary, uh, tell us what you think about what James Tour said and uh, why you think he's wrong. Well, the background on Tour is that um, he did have this powerful conversion experience. He became a, a Jew for Jesus, or now he said, as he says, a, a messianic Jew. And his faith to him is absolutely uh, critical. And as a scientist, he needs to find some sort of way to support this scientifically. So this is one of the things he is hit upon. That the origin of life is impossible uh, physically without a supernatural intervention. Um, and so consequently, he attacked uh, a particularly uh, amusing article, really, um, that was in Nature, but it's Innovations article. It's, it's a cartoon, it's a sketch uh, outlining a little bit of the scientific literature for people who are neither 
experts nor necessarily even scientists. So it's in nature, but it's not a published scientific paper. In absolutely. Nature. So the, right. absolutely, the, the first lie, and it's just a flagrant lie of James Tour, is that this is primary literature. This is like saying um, Dennis the Menace is about child development. <laughs> and in fact, look, this is this is the lead illustration for the article. You got a made up molecule with a chicken hatching right. at the bottom. This is not primary literature. So that's lie number one. This is a piece of the primary literature that that uh, Tour is going to be using later on. Um, and it's particularly the focus of uh, Tour's criticism of, of Stosak. Uh, as you can see, since this is a activated pyrimidine nucleotide, radionucleotides in prebiotically plausible conditions. This is a fo this was 2009. It's followed up by a later article. Again, uh, prebiotic synthesis of simple sugars <coughs> by photoredox systems chemistry. Now, this is only one of hundreds and hundreds of papers showing various reaction pathways uh, to get simple sugars in a prebiotic condition. Now, this is the slide that Tour says is the illustration from uh, Sozak's little paper. It's a two and a half page paper. Um, and it turns out uh, the first thing that, that uh, uh, Tour starts shouting about is that there's no sugars. He goes, there's no sugars, right? And he's lying to you. There's no, he says, I don't recognize any sugars. Up at the top left says simple sugars, okay? Those simple sugars. He says, those aren't sugars. Hmm. Yes, they are. They're simple sugars. They are the most simple sugars. That they're the core of all sugars. Glyceraldehyde is basically the model for all sugar. This is, this is what it will look like when you don't have just a simple little cartoon sketch. But a chemist, a so-called genius chemist, is supposed to be able to do undergraduate chemistry. And this is undergraduate chemistry. In fact, that illustration was from an undergraduate course. It shouldn't have been that hard. He carries on about cyanide. He says, that's not cyanide. He's lying. Stozak's lying to you, right? That's not cyanide. It, first of all, it doesn't say cyanide. It says cyanide derivatives. Do we see that? Mm -hmm. Cyanide derivatives. And in fact, the first one there on the left was cyanonitrine. It's a cyanide derivative. Exactly what it said it was. Now, on to the magic, what did he say? Swoosh or whoosh? <laughs> um, that, you know, got a good laugh line out of the audience. The audience, by the way, were a bunch of uh, Baptist uh, theologians. Okay. Uh, which is one of the reasons why they were so happy and, and amused by trashing science, trashing scientists, um, because that makes their faith uh, richer and happier for them. <laughs> he says that this is not a nucleotide. He says, this structure is not a nucleotide. He goes on and on about it. It's not a nucleotide. Yes, it is. It's ribose, which is a very simple sugar that's made out of those other simple sugars and those cyanide derivatives. And here's the illustration turned so it's oriented with this structural formula here. Wow. Um, what we have here is, in fact, an RNA nucleotide. He says flat out it's not. Here it is with the phosphate added to the bottom there. It is a basic, basic molecule. It's part of the uh, nucleic acids and, and it has ribose for the sugars. That makes it, that makes it RNA. Now, again, these are not the only articles that are available and re relative to the uh, origin of life just talking about ribose as a sugar or other sugars. And we see that 
that from the literature, the actual primary literature, not only does it form readily, um, it is isolated and incorporated in chemistry that's associated with the origin of life. Um, I don't know if you need to know the dates on all these, but some of that stuff is 10 years old. Hmm. And certainly Tour, who uh, recorded that chat or rant, actually, uh, of only a month ago or so, uh, ought to have been able to read the literature. He ought to have been able to look up undergraduate chemistry. Um, also, the stability of these sugars is known to be associated with minerals, uh, which is something else that uh, this is that nudging joke that um, mm -hmm. that he made. Nudge, you can't say nudge. I don't know. When you're talking to people who don't know what they're talking about, nudge is better than probably borate mineral stabilized ribose. <laughs> right? Or, yeah. you know, and it's also worth noting, this doesn't even have, just have to happen on Earth. In fact, we have extracted the same basic sugars from meteorites. This happens in outer space. You don't need... Right. I mean, it's easier to do it on Earth, but you can do it in outer space. And in fact, one notion is that uh, meteorites during the massive, massive bombardments, um, and if you look at the craters on the moon, you can see how massive that was, that these are the kinds of events that could have delivered to the Earth pre-prepared <laughs> uh, organic molecules that are essential to the original life. Right, yeah. So, here we see some of the basic chemistry again, undergraduate stuff. And back to tour. It's interesting because this has been chatted about on a lot of creationist websites. This has been quite a little hit. And there's a couple things worth noting. One, the Discovery Institute, which is a major, major source of all the intelligent design creationism has insisted for decades that they're not creationists. They're really doing science. Right. Yeah. And this really hangs them out as just flat out creationists. Um, and it also turns out that Tour heard about um, first uh, our discussions and our blog posts from an inter intermediary who warned him that we were going to do this video. And in fact, that he should take get the Discovery Institute to take their video off of YouTube to minimize the damage to Tour's professional reputation, because obviously he is not telling the truth and he is uh, let his religious fanaticism uh, not only make him lie, it, it, it makes him unable to understand freshman, well, not say sophomore chemistry, maybe even oh. junior biochem so so actually someone saw your blog about this yeah. um exposing what what we were going to talk about here mm -hmm. and um and and warren james tour what, what what was his response to that well the the most interesting was uh to me is that he now has claimed he's called um uh, professor stosak jack stosak uh personally uh, to apologize for calling him a liar and slandering him repeatedly. Wow. Uh, and so, you know, you kind of wonder, though, liars lie, right? I mean, did he really do that? I would have to hear it from uh, Sozak, frankly, before I bought anything that Tura has to say about anything anymore. If he said it was Tuesday, I'd look out at the calendar. Right. So what was Tura's response um, and after he saw your um your blog and everything and was notified of that well it's it, it's curious um since there was a pretty active discussion on some of the creationist websites or chat rooms whatever you want to call them um at least to one uh he responded uh that he had uh, gotten carried away and that he had apologized personally to uh professor Sozak. uh and on the phone, made a phone call, and that uh, his apology was accepted and everything's okay now. 
everybody's happy and and he's he's asked the lord to forgive him as well hmm. and so it also turns out that the video this was supposed to have been on uh, may 3rd uh and it also turns out the video is still up um the frauds are still being perpetrated the lies are still being told um he seems to me, you know, almost an analogy here would be, um, you know, you, you look at somebody like a Dr. Andrew Snelling, who knows enough about geology to be dangerous to real science. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, where, where they think that they can get away with certain things because the public doesn't have the knowledge. They start to get into technical areas of something and, uh, you know, and they'll, then they'll just flat out claim, but... We know that couldn't have happened. Geologists yeah. know that couldn't have happened. Well, no, that's just not the truth of it. Yeah. Um, and, and what's amusing yeah. to me is that Tour is saying, look, these guys are lying to me, to you because they know you don't know enough to know that, that they're lying. And that's what he's lying about. <laughs> that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's sad. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's just I don't I don't. I don't see why it's not even biblical. In fact, <laughs> I mean, it, it, the Bible cites many times uh, that you know the that the uh, creation, the physical universe, and the biological universe is an honest testimony to the uh, awesomeness of God, and that God would never lie. And if God's never going to lie, and and we're going to uh, see this in the, in the physical universe. Then these guys should stop lying about it. <laughs> well, lying hasn't stopped, unfortunately, uh, most of the creationists and and even a lot of the ID people. Yeah. So, yeah, now sure. there are there are folks that are scientists and religious. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, absolutely. Like and I would never say that someone can't be religious and do science. Right. It's just right. that. Um, you know, what they call creation science isn't science. Oh, yeah. That's, that's um, promoting true. intelligent design isn't science. Right. Um, but that doesn't mean that people that uh, believe in those things can't do real science. Yeah. And, and what also amuses me, and maybe we can talk about this some other day, but the notion that, that so many Christian creationists have is that somehow if you destroyed science, everything would be happy and groovy. And, and Christianity would have somehow been advanced when, in fact, there are Islamic creationists, there's Hindu creationists, there's Jewish creationists, there, there are even pagan uh, creationists that, uh, for example, um, there's a, uh, there was a book published some years ago, uh, Red Earth and uh, White Lies, where it was argued that uh, white Christianity was forced upon the Native Americans, the red earth part, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Just to subvert and destroy their true faith and their true original religions. Wow. So, I mean, we've got, you've got any kind of creationists, and none of them are going to be helped by uh, denial of science, because how are you going to do it other than making stuff up? I don't know. I don't know. Well, hey, thanks for joining me here today. This has been awesome. Um, I'm going to put a link in the video description to your blog. Oh, thanks. So, yeah, and you know, it's been following. I've been following that for quite a while. You hadn't posted much again until recently. Oh no. Well, fishing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> fish. you know, yeah, it's funny because you, you and I, I've seen you. Um, more than anyone else probably make comments on like news articles out there. Right. It's like every now and then I get bored and I'll type in creationism and hit news just to see what's <laughs> out there. Or sometimes I get notified <laughs> something from the NCSE, yeah. you know, and I'll go to the original article and there's Gary Hurd's comment. Yeah, well, <laughs> you beat me to it. Well, you know, there, you know I'm trying to, I would rather reach a, a public that's, that say is looking at newspapers because they're not going to be going dredging through our stuff our blogs or what have you. And so if I'm going to newspapers or I'm going to magazine websites and so on, at least I'm reaching the people that I hope are going to be maybe naive and have seen something that's bogus and um, and uh, maybe a little word. Well, it also, you know, it, it sometimes I think it's, it's 
sometimes the only chance you have to really connect with that author or the person that wrote the article because, yeah. um, you know, they, they don't come and check out some Facebook group somewhere. But, right. but the article or the person the article is about is probably going to read the comments. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. you do have a chance to, to um, have your voice heard to them too. So, And a lot of journalists, I mean, God bless them, but um, they're not necessarily scientists. I mean, they were... Journalism. No, no. Headlines drive me crazy. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. So. so, you know, it's helping, you know, hopefully a little bit to educate some of these guys. And, and I'm glad you mentioned it. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks again. And I'll be talking yeah. to you again soon. Great, Bill. All See right, you thanks. later. Yep. Okay. So if, 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 and one there. Okay. If, if I say something that's not true, I want you to stand up and just say liar. <laughs> All right. If I say something that's not true, just stand up. All right, because I, I, I want these people to know, for all they know, I'm lying. You have to, you have to verify on this.